I'm Caitlin. I'm the nature interpreter at the Gorge Waterway Nature House, and today I'm going to be talking about sea stars. The main body of a sea star is called the central disc and is surrounded by the arms. Most sea stars have five arms, but some species can have up to 40. On top of the central disc, there is a pore called the madreporite, which allows seawater into the sea star's body. This is part of the sea star's water vascular system, which uses seawater for gas exchange and to control the sea star's tube feet. The tube feet are on the underside of each arm and are used by the sea star for movement and for holding on to prey. A sea star's mouth is also on its underside in the middle of the central disc. Aside from allowing the sea star to move, the tube feet are also very sensitive and help the sea star to navigate its environment. Sea stars can use their sense of touch to explore their surroundings, and their tube feet can also detect chemicals in the water to help them find prey, sort of like our sense of smell. Sea stars also have an eye spot on the tip of each arm, which can sense light and darkness. Starfish are predators, and they usually go after slow-moving or sessile animals like clams, mussels, or sponges. So when a starfish eats, it can evert its stomach onto prey. So that means that it can bring its stomach up out through its mouth, put its stomach onto prey to digest that prey outside of its body. And after it absorbs the nutrients from the prey, it brings its stomach back into its body again. So this allows a starfish to eat something that is much too large to actually fit inside its mouth. Some starfish also have other methods of eating. So for example, the blood star in the sequaria is also a filter feeder. So it can trap small food particles using mucus that's on the underside of its arms. And then it has tiny hairs called cilia, which sweep those food particles from the arms towards its mouth. Sea stars are usually found in tide pools or below the low tide line so that they can stay underwater during low tides. You can usually find sea stars in sheltered, rocky areas of the beach, especially if there are mussels or sponges nearby for them to eat. I hope you enjoyed learning about sea stars today, and next week I'll be back to talk about sea urchins. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!